Okay, let's talk just a minute about something called implicit differentiation. This is going to be a quick video. Assuming you already know how to take most derivatives, um, this is just a different way to do that. So explicit, you have not been calling it explicit differentiation, but that's what you've been doing so far all year long. Uh, that's when your teacher's given you a function. Uh, it's maybe f of x equals something or y equals something. And then she tells you to take the derivative. So you might see something like this, the d over dx, and she asks you to do that with your function. And when you answer it, uh, the notation on this side turns into dy over dx, and then you just take a derivative. Okay, so you're used to doing that. Now, what's interesting is implicit is going to mean that instead of everything over here being an x, um, it might be a mix of variables, okay? And so it becomes a question of, well, how do I take a derivative if there's different kinds of variables? Well, um, the main thing is that the reason you've been doing this notation is because this variable down here is telling you what to take the derivative with respect to. So in other words, this is saying um, I want to see the change of the function with respect to x. So anytime there's an x, you just take the derivative and you move on. Now with implicit, um, what you're actually doing is you're being cognizant of this notation and you really are thinking through every single variable you're taking the derivative of and there may just be some notation behind it. So, so let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me do the same function over here with implicit. And the idea would be I'm still going to write d over dx, but I'm going to show you what's really happening in the background that we just kind of ignore when we're doing explicit. All right, what's really happening is you're taking the derivative of y. So you're saying, well, that's just a variable, and the derivative of 1y would just be 1. So um, just because you're doing like a power rule on it. And then what happens is you are saying, it's almost like a chain rule where you say, well, I took the derivative of, of y and it's one, but that's not an x and it's supposed to be. So I just took the derivative of y with respect to x. So that notation is behind the y, believe it or not. We just, and that's why it looks like this over here, we just don't write the 1 in the front, okay? Now if we take the derivative of this term, it would be 6x, and the reason there's no notation behind it is because what did we just take the derivative of? We took the derivative of x with respect to x. So there's been an invisible dx over dx behind this the whole time that was never mentioned because it didn't need to be mentioned yet. Um, and the reason it's not shown, same thing here, this is a 4, but we just took the derivative of x over x. Uh, the reason it's not written over here is because, guys, what is something over itself? Well, anything over itself is just 1, so you don't really have to write that 1. And so that's why our answer has been looking like this, okay? Now this is important because you have to know the proper way to do implicit for whenever x's or y's are mixed together. So like, uh, let me just do like a random circle equation. 3x squared plus 3y squared equals 10, something like that. Okay, so if you were to see this equation and somebody said, take the derivative of all of this, with respect to x, you can do it now if you use that notation. So you're going to take the derivative of the first term, which is a 6x. Now what did I just take the derivative of? I took the derivative of the x term with respect to x. Plus this one right here, I'm going to take the derivative of y, which is 6y. What did I just take the derivative of? I took the derivative of y with respect to x. And then over here, the derivative of 10 is just a 0, so who cares about notation because it's a 0. All right, and now we clean this up. Now dx over dx is just 1. You don't really need to write it. But dy over dx, those are different things, and so this is what we're looking at. Now, if we were asked to find the derivative, okay, you really do want to isolate 
the dy over the dx. So once you get a mess like this, it becomes an algebra problem where you're trying to isolate that term, that derivative. So I'm going to start by subtracting 6x from both sides. Then I'm going to divide off the 6y from both sides. And then my final answer is, what does that look like? A negative x over y. That would be my derivative using implicit differentiation. So now you have a way when x's and y's are mixed to actually take a derivative. Now I realize I'm at five minutes. I'm going to do one more problem that's maybe if it's a little bit trickier. So let's pretend that you're asked to find the dy dx of this function. Um, x squared minus 2y squared plus xy equals 20. Okay, so something like this. This is actually uh, some kind of hyperbola, I think. But um, even if you don't know what it looks like, it really doesn't matter. So we are going to take the derivative of all of this. Now to save time, okay. I'm going to go ahead and write this on the outside. But whenever I go and... Um, Man, what's going on here? I got like a crazy fat marker. Okay, so whenever I um, come up here uh, to take the derivative, um, from now on, if it's an x term, I'm actually not going to write um, dx over dx anymore because we've already talked that through. So uh, we know it's going to turn into a 1. So the derivative of x squared is 2x, and there would be a dx over dx behind it, but I'm not going to write it, okay, minus um, the derivative of 2y squared would be a 4y, but I do need the notation because it's a y on top now, okay, and then plus, okay, that is an x times y, so we have to be careful because um, this is actually a product of two different variables. I'm going to roll into a product rule right now. So um, this is my f, this is my g. So I need to do the derivative of the first, which is 1, okay? And I don't need to write the dx dx times the, der times the normal g function, okay? Plus the derivative of the g function. So what's the derivative of y? Well, it's a 1 dy dx times the f, the original f function, and then that's going to equal zero. And my pen's kind of jacked up, so sorry this looks like a scary movie. Um, I don't know what's going on with this stupid thing, but right now it's stuck. So um, you have all of this. Now it's a little harder than the last one because I see a dy dx here, but I also see a dy dx here, which means that I need to group these together and I get to subtract the 2x over and I get to subtract the y over. So it looks like it's going to look something like this. Okay, now 0 minus 2x minus y. Oops, that's an x, minus 2x minus y. Okay, so I just moved any term over that did not have the dy dx. And now I've grouped these two on this side because they both have the dy dx, okay? So plus sign. There we go. And um, what I would do now is just advise you to factor because both terms have this dy dx, which is what we're supposed to be isolating. So you're just going to factor that out to the front. And when you take that out, it's going to leave a negative 4y plus x. On this side, we still have that. Okay. Now, if uh, you want this isolated, how do you get rid of the thing attached? Well, you divide by it. And so if we divide on that side, negative 4y plus x. Okay, so this is how we're going to handle it. And um, yeah, that's how I would quit. You know, you don't want to reduce unless everybody has something in common and none of these have everything in common. So my dy dx is going to be this as my final answer. All right, so you're going to try a few problems from section 2.5 in the book.
section 2.5 and um, then you're gonna let me know if you get stuck on any of them or send me pictures or ask me to work them out you know whatever that's fine but that is my explanation of how to do implicit I hope I didn't lose you anywhere but if so let me know thanks